Now today's plea bargain by the former chief executive officer of Oceanic Bank is the first judgment in the cases of financial impropriety brought against five bank chief executives by the EFCC. Well, now to throw more light on this development, I'm being joined on the news at 10 by a legal practitioner, Mr. Ijiti Ogunye. Thanks so much for joining us on the news at 10. Yeah, it's my pleasure to be here. Right. Do you think the judge got it right um, in this instance? Do you, do you see this as a fair judgment in terms of the crime and now the punishments being given? Yeah, I will speak generally because um, as a trained lawyer, I still have to read the judgment to know whether it's a reasoned judgment and a judgment that is justified by the circumstances of uh, the criminal conduct. Uh, but speaking generally, let me say that I do not feel that the judgment that has been handed down or delivered today reflect the criminal conduct uh, charge. As a matter of fact, uh, from your reports, it's obvious that Mrs. Sincilia Ibu was not convicted of stealing. Rather, was convicted, she was convicted of not rendering appropriate reports, you know, turning in reports that were not proper you know, uh, to uh, the CBN. And as it is, there is an incongruity, there is a disharmony between the aspect of the verdict that says that her asset be forfeited and the conviction that has been returned in respect of the charge. Because, uh, let me just uh, pose this, uh, you know, question. If somebody did you furnish reports as these reports ought to be furnish, uh, furnished? Why would that then be a crime that would warrant the forfeiture of assets? Forfeiture of assets follows stealing so or misappropriation. So so as if she hasn't rendered the financial statements as she should have done, then it's stealing. It isn't. No, 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 no. no. What, do you mean? what I'm saying is that by this. Uh, Curious Explain plea bargain. It is, yes. it is confusing. Yes. What, what I'm saying is that by this curious plea bargaining that you've been uh, uh, coupled up, she has been convicted not for stealing. She has been convicted for you know, furnishing reports that were it accurate, they are proper, and so on and so forth. Okay, the whole thing has, the whole arrangement, uh, let, let's, let's say, has been seen as something that was put together, a plea bargain between the prosecution and the defense. For the benefit of those who don't understand what, is, what exactly has happened, explain to us how this plea bargain has worked in this case. Yes, yeah, let, let me just give a definition and then I will explain quickly. Now, plea bargaining is a criminal justice uh, procedure by which a criminal defendant and the prosecution or the state and the criminal defendant enter into negotiation leading to the criminal defendant pleading guilty to a lesser offense okay, so than how one originally charged or pleading guilty to a, a number of fewer counts from the many counts that were originally charged. So how has so she, that, how has she taken well, advantage so of that? So that the criminal defendant will then be convicted of that lesser uh, offense or lesser counts and then get a lighter sentence while the state again will go home with uh, the celebration that this person has been convicted all the same and perhaps in this case some money has been recovered. So how That's how the pre yes, I mean, but works. In this particular case how has she now taken advantage of it which is what people want to know in beyond telling us what a plea bargain is what is it about this arrangement? If she's not the only person that has taken advantage of this loose and rather unfortunate uh, application of uh, the plea bargain procedure. I have argued that the plea bargain procedure uh, is right, there is nothing wrong with it, uh, but the way it is being applied in mm -hmm. Nigeria is it, funny. Mm -hmm. uh, this is not the only case we've uh, seen this. We mm -hmm. saw it in the Tafar Balogun case, mm -hmm. we saw it in the Lucky Binedon case, uh, and we see it now. And so we like you to see it more and more. And so what needs to be done is for this plea bargain process to be well regulated so that both the judge, the prosecution, and the criminal defendant will know with certainty the kind of what or the kind of punishment they are likely to receive if they change their plea, if they enter into plea bargain. But now it is loose and so what the FCC does is to use its elaborate power under section 14 to 
of uh, the EFCC Establishment Act that permits the EFCC to compound charges or offenses and then compromise uh, cases. So it is a discretion that is not being mm. well regulated. Mm. So if somebody is charged with offenses, you know, uh, the content of which um, we had about 191 billion. Yes, I will get so to that. I'm going to get to so that. Looking at that amount that's involved, we, she's supposed to forfeit that amount, and we, we understand the judge has ruled that that should go to the asset management company of Nigeria. What happens after that? What, where does the money, how does it now become incorporated into the government's financial well, system? Well, we, it's, it may be too early to, to know uh, with certitude where this money is headed. Well, I'm asking under that. Section 14 yeah. of the EFCC Establishment Act, the money that is recovered under this process, under this plea bargain process of compounding uh, offenses or crimes or charges, ought to go to the Consolidated Revenue Fund. Now, by the judgment, from what we've had, uh, the judge has ruled that the money should go to the Asset Forfeiture Management uh, uh, Commission. Mm -hmm. Now, I have told that, ultimately, the beneficiary of this forfeiture should be the shareholders and depositors. Exactly. I'm asking that question. Whose money have been frittered away with, whose money have been taken away. So, I, I don't know how this is going to... You know, uh, I'm ask, okay. I ask that question because a lot of the time we hear assets were frozen, it's going to be forfeited, and then we hear very little about what eventually happens to the money at the end of exactly, the day. Exactly, exactly. Yeah, so that's, so that is I an think issue. That it's a matter for concern. Well, finally, yeah. quickly now, looking at the judgment, um, we, we saw that the judge allowed her to go back to hospital. You know, and uh, many people have argued that when highly placed individuals are on trial, etc., their health seems to be something that they take advantage of. Do you see this as a trend, or is it different in this particular case? It's a trend, and I say that it's a troubling trend, because uh, there should be equality of everybody before the law. Now, the problem is, uh, that I see is that uh, Redditing Hospital is not equally prison hospital. So if you sentence somebody to prison, send him to that prison and let the prison health authority determine whether he's sick or not before you then refer him to a hospital. You can say that somebody should continue to stay in hospital while you are pretending that you sentenced him. So is and she going to be in hospital or is she going to be in prison for the Of course, she's going to be in the hospital okay. because her right to life is in question. Now you know that in the case of Bodo Judge, the Court of Appeal resisted the move to grant him post-conviction bail on account of his alleged uh, illness in prison. All right, thank that's We're going to have to leave it at that point. Thank you so much for joining us on the yeah, News thanks. at 10. Okay. I've been speaking with um, a legal practitioner on the sentencing of Mrs. Cecilia Ebru, the Chief Executive Officer of Oceanic Bank. Thanks so much for being with us. Yes, my pleasure.